Hi and welcome to another Free Willis webisode. Today I'm here to share with you both my love of a cream makeup products, although I am combination to oily skinned, uh, and my love of customizing and depotting stuff. And because I've talked about this on my Instagram and literally nobody cared, I decided to do a full video on it. <laughs> so today I'm talking about the view set. Uh, palettes that I've recently purchased and customized all for myself and I'm really chuffed with them. They come in different sizes and configurations. Um, the tinier ones are these and these are the ones that I have enjoyed the most, I must say, on the regular because they are so tiny and I love teeny tiny things and they have a little little rings, uh, little loops so that you can put in key rings to create your own key ring of makeup. That's so much fun. And then we have bigger ones and they have bigger than this. A palettes that you can put, you know, a huge collection of things that you will reach for more easily uh, in that sense. So, and these palettes that I'm going to talk about today are from Viewset, not sponsored, of course. Nobody knows who I am. I have about 1,000 subscribers that never watched these videos. But um, you can find that I bought them in a local um, makeup store that is the Kitchen Makeup Boutique. But you can find them in places like Beautylish and Guru Makeup Emporium and stuff like that. Look it up. They are, I think, widely available in boutiques, I'd say. And if you want the king of all palettes and you are in the US, check out the Harry Makes It Up video on depotting her stuff for her Makeup Pro kit. She uses palettes from the Artist, My Artist Kit, Artist Kit Company, I think. It's the brand. I'll put it on here, and those are magnetic, tiny, um, card-sized palettes that you can put in and out. They have several sizes, so it's the ultimate um, customizing experience. And of course, because they are magnetic, you can actually every single day put in whatever you are wearing that day and take it with you which is, I mean, fantastic. Unfortunately, it's not easily available outside of the US, uh, so I'm not going to talk about those because I don't have them, and I don't think I will have them in the near future. You can customize your makeup palettes using whichever creams you have around, being stick form bullets, um, you know, the twist-up crayons for eyes, um, pots, whatever, and I've been playing and testing out that kind of thing because I really like the idea of creating my own little makeup palettes. You can always do that with eyeshadow palettes, you know, buying singles, but with your face stuff it's a bit more difficult to do and uh, I've been trying out these kinds of things and I'm I'm totally in love and I'm going to give you my impressions. First, let's start with the pros. Uh, these are super portable, of course, and you can create your own little palettes and take your stuff everywhere. I have a full face of complexion products with several choices of blusher here and a full um, eye palette completed with eyeliners and several eye colors uh, in this one. And this with just powder, um, mascara and brow and the brow product which I have here to show you. I, I took out all my travel sizes to make um, to make the the kit complete uh, and you can see that with this you can carry it anyway anywhere and you have your full face of makeup really easily. Travel where you're not going anywhere. At the moment think positive and also, you know, touching up at work and stuff like that. I mean, there are places to go down the street. The other thing is that they are absolutely customizable and within each size they are stackable, which is really cool. And uh, because they are transparent, I can see at all times what's in there, what I have, uh, even in the bigger ones and because of that and the fact they are so small They are easy for me to keep closer to my main makeup station to my top drawer and I Tend to grab for stuff that I wasn't using uh, before this Far more often not only just doing my full face of makeup like I did today full face with just this um, little mini palette, but also using some products that I 
had been overlooking, like sort of my Kiko uh, cream eyeshadows that come in those little pens, my Colourpop lippy sticks, you know, things that I, I really like, uh, but I haven't reached for that often. Now let's talk about the cons. Again, of course, obviously this will only work for creams, which are not some people's most favourite products, but I think everybody has kind of a few cream um, makeup products that they love, at least a concealer or some cream eyeshadows, some blushes maybe, highlighters, let me know in the comments below. It's only worth it if you don't mind using your fingers for larger pans like this and smaller brushes overall. Uh, for instance, I cannot go with my big kabuki sized brushes uh, on my face palette. I go with things like this. This is a concealer brush from Sephora that I use for all over my face. And this is a, a brush from Real Techniques. It's called the Dual Fiber Contour Brush. And it's small enough that I can, you know, swipe it and then use it on my face. And this kind of size is the size for the bigger pans. And then for the smaller pans like these, uh, not even a finger will fit in many cases, so I would go with smaller size brushes like these or, and you will have this if you've decided to depot stuff, a spatula. Uh, a spatula is an essential to start the process of removing things from their main packaging and putting them into palettes. And they are great little tools, 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 tools to scrape off a little bit of a product applying onto a palette or your hand and work it onto your skin, lips, eyes, whatever. Uh, I really have been enjoying using this thing for everything. Now I feel like very, I'm very pro, you know? But it's really useful, especially for me with these smaller pans, uh, when I want to take a little bit of product, when it's something that is a bit more flakely, flakely, flaky in texture, or with uh, lipsticks, for instance, which, I don't always want to go in with a brush to apply the lipstick, but my fingers don't fit in here very easily, so I prefer to take a little bit with the spatula, work it with my fingers and dab on the lips, for instance. If you don't like to use your uh, fingers or smaller brushes, you won't like using these pans at least. And the last thing, and this is the main thing, is that these form the formulas of the products that you are working with were tested using the containers that they come in. So they were created, all the formula was created and their preservative system was created to endure inside that kind of container, which means that decanting into a palette may change the lasting ability of the product, of the one on the pan. So it's not, some of them are not meant to be in pans like this, some are meant to be in sticks with those clicky lids that you really keep uh, well shut so they may dry out a bit a little bit quicker so you should be on the lookout for changes in texture and smell on your products always keep good hygiene habits in mind for these things or it will it won't be fun now things you need to know you will always need to sterilize everything so at least alcohol keep it at hand and thoroughly cleanse and clean and sanitize all your palettes and tools and everything um, I think a spatula is essential. This one is from Cryolin, but you can find them easily um, everywhere, I'd say. You will need lots of Q-tips and cotton buds or cotton buds because that's, that's how it goes. It gets dirty, it gets messy. These are creams. I would always opt for something like Inglot Duraline. Having it at hand is really good for some of those creams that may not be as creamy or easy to work with. At first hand you pick up part of the product put it onto you know one of those palettes and work it with a little bit of the Duraline and sort of knead the product in a way to make it more creamier and then you can put it inside your view set palette so that it, it's easier to mold and work with to put inside the wells and this is a game of patience so if you're not a very patient person if you're not into handiwork if you're not into hunching over a table, doing very small minute work and with a lot of minutia, this won't be for you. This takes hours really and it's messy as I said and it's it's not the most clean process. So if you don't like that, 
you will not probably enjoy <laughs> doing depotting and decanting. I would say uh, things like um, waterproof formulas or a twist up eyeliner pen, uh, not pen pens, pencils, twist up eyeliner pencils that tend to dry out and stick to your skin. Those things, if you put them in contact with air or in a larger pan where there's more surface, the air will come in and they will start to dry out. So I would not transfer those formulas into here. Trust me, I tried. I screwed up one of the pans trying to decant a little bit of a pencil eyeliner onto here. It didn't work. It dried out. You can use Duraline again to work and make it revive a little bit, but it won't be easy to scrape off and take uh, and use uh, for on the regular, I'd say. And the last thing is you can decant the ColourPop Super Shock shadows, the ones that are more, um, even the mattes, they feel a bit flaky when you try to pick them up with a, a palette, but you can do that by, again, taking a little bit of Duraline, but just mix with the, the amount of product that you want to transfer and you will be able to make it slightly more creamy. So easier to work with, more pliable, and you may you will be able to put them in a tiny palette. I've put one of those um, in here, is the one, the second to your left, this one here. It's been working beautifully, the, it hasn't dried out or anything, which did surprise me because, you know, Super Shock Shadows are tend to dry out a little bit, but it's been performing really well, and uh, the Super Shock Shadows are some of those products that really work well with mostly with uh, Inglot Duraline, so that's a plus. Let's uh, quickly go through the products that I have mentioned, not the products, but the palettes that I've mentioned in this video. My complexion palette is the Seneca uh, palette from Viewset. It's the one with six square wells, uh, and I forgot to show you the thickness of them. It's uh, something that is interesting to notice. The one with my eye cream products is the Louis, palette uh, and I have mostly, you know, Kiko, um, those shadow sticks that they have. I have Colourpop, MAC, um, more Kiko, uh, Maybelline and then I have a few eyeliners. I have Mr. Bing uh, pot eyeliner from Colourpop and the black is Maybelline. But if you'd ask me in retrospect, I would buy the one that only has the rectangular wells instead of these little squares because these are really teeny tiny and they're really finicky to put product in even with a spatula. So I would prefer to have all rectangular wells and it, it's easier to then dip a brush, even an eyeliner brush in, in those rectangular wells. So yeah, it's called Bella, the one that has all rectangular wells. And then this one, the 24 big wells one, as you can see the thickness on here, is the Tahiti one. In case you're wondering, these are all my Colourpop lippy sticks. I still have the Lux uh, lipsticks um, in their original casing. And then I've decanted basically all the lipsticks that I don't mind having in a palette instead of in the bullet form. These are all Catrice and Essence Fantastic formulas that they keep on discontinuing, rude, why? And some other Dior Chanel that I just packed onto here. And if you're wondering, well, that's not very portable, is it? No, it ain't. But um, if I want to go out and reapply lipstick, I'll probably take something else that I still have in a bullet and to play at home or to apply once and leave it on. If it fades, it fades. It's okay. And if I really want to, this fits in any of my bags because I don't use tiny bags, so that's fine. What do I have in my palette that I've used today? I have one foundation and I went and I used it as my foundation and concealer. I have the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation stick. I love this. You can also add or just instead of foundation of a foundation stick, you can use a concealer stick, something like the Marc Jacobs Uncover Up one, their minerals and the cover effects are fantastic ones that you can shear out and use as a foundation if you need and you can build a little bit more up and apply as a concealer. But I decided to only have my foundation here as a bronzer because this is never going to end. This is the Milk uh, Makeup Stick Bronzer in Blaze. I've had this for too long. I should put this to bed, but I cannot, I cannot do that. 
they should only have the mini ones because this is too much product. Unless you're a makeup artist that slathers everyone in bronzer, you cannot see the end of this. But anyway, I've used it as a bronzer and it's my only bronzer slash contour product in my palette. And then I have the Nude Sticks Nudies Matte in Sunkissed as my blusher and eye product. Um, I really like these Nude Sticks products, really love them. Uh, and the other one that I have is Bareback uh, in my palette. I have not used it today. It's a fainter pinky color. And then on my lips, I've used a mix of as a balm, as a gloss, and I also use this as an eye gloss very often. This is the Chanel uh, Balm Essential in Rosé. I didn't get my hands on the transparent one, but it's fine because in the meantime, I got the Danessa Myricks one, so I don't need it, and it's far more inexpensive. And they kind of do the same thing, if you get my drift. And then I applied on top of that balm on my lips, uh, the blusher, this is the Milk Makeup Lip and Cheek um, Quickie Stick, which is again huge, I will not see the end of it, and it's a deep cherry red, which I really love, both on the lips and used as, you know, that kind of flush in the winter time, it's beautiful. And it's my third option as a blusher and lip color. And that's what I've used. On top of it, I went with, in case you're wondering, the Laura Mercier uh, translucent setting powder and then I just went with mascara and I used the Essence Make Me Brow on my brows. So if you haven't noticed with this video I've been having a lot of fun with my palettes and customizing things and rekindling my love for cream products although this mask kind of era is not the best to use your creams I can still make do um, and I've been rekindling also my love for some products that had been forgotten, to be honest, and I'm using, not using up because some of them are impossible to use up, <laughs> but I've been using stuff that I haven't uh, picked up in a long time, so I'm really chuffed about it. Let me know in the comments below, would you be able to do a palette for yourself or a couple of them? What would you put in them? Would you create a one that is an everyday kind of things that you use every single day, or would you pile on all the things that you're kind of forgetting and leaving in the back burner and you want to revive in your memory and in your arsenal. Also, let me know what you want to watch next from me. And as usual, if you haven't, please consider subscribing. Talk about me to your friends if they are interested in makeup and beauty and all of that, and especially if they are in the over 40 kind of range and they, they want to hang around with someone, you know, their own size. <laughs> also, uh, leave me a like if you've enjoyed this video and as usual, thank you for spending your time on me and I'll see you on my next video. Bye.